Ahoy friends, welcome to Building the Alpha Dory. I'm Dan and this is a project to build a Chamberlain style racing dory from John Gardner's The Dory Book, illustrations by Sam Manning. Today we're going to be out in the shop riveting the shear strakes. So uh, yeah, let's get out there and get banging some rivets. You guys might be having a bit of deja vu. Looks kind of like uh, when we started building this boat. So yeah, it's definitely uh, been a uh, process. So. Let's see what's going on in the shop. Make sure the uh, make sure that stove hasn't uh, hasn't set anything on fire out here. Well, it looks like we're we're good. Has taken a bit of the chill off though. Alright, just doing a few minutes of cleanup before we get riveting. Moving the sawhorse and all the junk that it accumulated on it in underneath the boat now. So it's a uh, easier to walk through here. Um, I could probably get rid of half the stuff that's against this wall here, but at least uh, for the stuff stashed in underneath the boat, it's actually out of the way because you know, now that we've got all the planks on, you can't, uh, you can't walk any closer to the boat than this because, well, there's a boat there. But, uh, yeah, I think I'll sweep up and pick up some of the nails on the floor here, and then we'll, uh, then we'll get into the riveting. Yeah, so I'm also, uh, finding that I've got a little bit of a wood hoarding problem. I just can't get rid of little scraps of wood that I'll probably never use for anything, but, yeah, like, uh, I found one of these on the floor. I got two or three more of them up in the rafters. These are uh, frame ends from one of the centennial dories that I built. I'm not sure if it was the first one which went to uh, Maine or if it's the one that I'm sailing now, but Yeah, either way, they've been around since the last Centennial I built was 2016, so it's been kicking around for at least almost five years. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're getting there. About to start the riveting. Oh yeah, then I neglected to mention this bit of wood here with the padding on it is from the uh, first alpha dory that I built which was 2008 that was a uh, maybe 2009 by the time I uh, it was 2008 yeah so that was a uh, bit of blocking that we used to uh, trailer it to the small reach regatta the first year that we brought her up there to uh, Brooklyn, Maine. So, and I haven't had the Alpha Dory um, since 20, uh, 2010, 2009, late maybe, late 2009, early 2010. So, yeah, so that's been, like I say, around for a while, just uh, 
waiting for me to build another alpha to use it on for uh yeah, it was it rode on the back and supported the spars when the boat was being trailered <laughs> rode on the uh rode back at the transom there all right so a little bit more cleaning and then we'll be ready to rivet okay well i've gotten most of the uh the shop pretty well cleaned up. Um, at least I can walk around the boat now. But yeah, unfortunately now I'm noticing one thing that's gone and happened is uh, <clears throat> the um, backing blocks that I've got for bucking the rivets. Uh, apparently seem to have suffered similarly to the uh, bottom of the, actually this one's not so bad, to the uh, bottom of the, um, the planes that were out here, the little block plane that apparently uh, the changes in the temperature and we're uh, We'll probably um, quarter mile from the marsh here, so pretty close to uh, pretty close to the marsh. Um, and, you know, plenty of moist uh, sea air because. Beyond that is the Atlantic Ocean. So, so yeah, it's rusted up pretty good. I'm just looking through my uh, sandpaper stash here. It would be really good to. Uh, find that uh, fine sandpaper I was using. Here it is. Thinking this may actually be 800 grit. Uh, and just hit these surfaces before we spend too much time riveting. Because this, uh, this rust will come off on the on the boat if you happen to be riveting it. This other one actually doesn't look all that bad. I think what, I'll, what maybe I'll do is uh, set one of these down on the uh, oil burner. Whew. Yeah, because it's... Uh, Set it on the frame of the oil burner there, because anything metal out here is going to be uh, temperature outside, and it's in the uh, in the twenties at this point. So the other thing I've uh, been looking into just recently, as in like today, and haven't really gotten much further on it. Um, is suggestions for low temperature glues. Um, I'm actually, actually looking at uh, maybe some of this 3200. Um, but that's kind of a rubbery silicone glue, and I'm not sure I want to use that. Uh, the application would be the rails. Um, you can really gain a lot of strength if you glue and nail the rails. So I'm thinking, you know, especially on a on a uh, racing dory, you know, if we're trying to keep her a little bit light, um, I'm thinking I may try and glue and nail the rails as opposed to just nailing them. So we'll see 
see what happens with that. Got the rivets right here, the uh, the burrs, and uh, a couple in there, a couple boxes of rivets ready to go. There we are. So we're ready to get riveting as soon as I can. Uh, as soon as I can get these backing blocks ready to roll. Yeah, so I'll hit this one with, uh, with some wax on the uh, thing surfaces, or at least the uh, surfaces that are going to touch the boat when I'm backing the rivets. Let's see how that other one's, see if the other one's warmed up at all yet. Probably haven't given it long enough, but it's a little bit better than it was. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get nice and toasty down here on the, uh, on the oil burner. Eventually they'll be hand warmers rather than, uh, rather than cold. This one a quick hit. This one's nowhere as near as bad. I think this may be the, the fucking iron that we were actually using for riveting. And these things have worked out really well. They were, uh, I don't know if it was four bucks or six bucks at a local, uh, local flea market. And I uh, usually try to uh, try to get a hold of you know American made tools whenever possible um, you know, they, uh, they've got a certain amount of quality to them and when you're buying the older tools that's pretty easy to do honestly because most of them were American made it's either that or they might have been English or something but 90% you know, of the tools you'll 99% of the tools you'll find around here in antique shops or thrift shops or people's yard sales are all, uh, you know, really pretty heavily built old American stuff. These are actually, um, if I had to guess, probably from the 90s or the 80s. They're made in Taiwan, but they're, uh, you know, still a, it's a fairly simple item. Nice heavy casting and they work great for what I'm using them for. You know, they're originally just uh, barbells, so you know, some sort of a uh, workout set. So these are ten pounds. I actually thought about taking one of them and cutting the cutting one of the uh, bells off it, and then you'd have a slightly lighter, you know, lighter than ten pounds, and you could actually even use the piece you cut off. Is like another even lighter back bucking uh, iron, but haven't really got around to it yet. And these are a little heavy, but they seem to be uh, doing the job. All right. Okay, so enough chatting. Let's get riveting. All right, so. You remember the tick stick from previous uh, episodes. Uh, the last time we used the tick stick, we used it on the inside. Now, that was not usual for the way I usually use it, which is on the outside of the board of the plank. Uh, because what you're trying to do is get the rivet as close to the bottom edge of the plank as you can. Now, the thing with the... Uh, with the next plank down from this was the plank actually overhangs the plank below it in spots so I couldn't use the bottom edge of the overhanging plank because then I might rivet you know out through air and then into the other plank because of that overhang um, but I've checked along the, the uh, 
seam all along the joint between the shear and the number three plank and it looks like the overhang is good all along so we're not going to need to trim that uh, if at all we're not going to need to trim it much so I'll be able to use the bottom edge of this plank anyway so what I'm going to do is switch back as we did on all the other planks except for this one here I'm going to switch back to uh, marking on the and drilling from the outside and marking from the inside seemed to work just fine but it's uh, you know, just not the way that it's been done in the past, so we'll try and stick with it um, for now, I guess. Uh, let's see. What's that old saying? Tradition. So big dooms around the uh, homestead today. My uh, my sister had a baby, so we've been uh, constantly in uh, communication with her. Uh, she's in Estonia, so no. Uh, no hospital visits for us or anything, but uh, we've been um, following along, so yeah, exciting news anyway. Just getting a bit of a work session in out here before going back, heading back in. Yeah, so then uh, when I get to the end and I'm at the nail that we've put into the frame, whatever's left, if I'm really close to, to the spacing of the tick stick, I'll just leave it. But if it's like, you know, say, if the nail's out here and my last mark is here, then I'll shift the stick down and, you know, put a, split the difference more or less, put one more rivet in. These rivets are four inches apart, um, which, uh, you know, is fairly closely spaced, but this is actually a room with four inches if, uh, if you ever wanted to. Um, you know, if she was getting uh, tired or whatever, you could actually put in a whole other set of rivets between these ones. There's plenty of wood between them, you know. And that, uh, that was something that was sometimes done, especially with the boat nails, you know, galvanized clench nails, which uh, just don't have the same staying power as a copper rivet, both because of the steel and because of it, it's a clench nail. It's not, a, it's not an actual rivet, which is, you know, rivet functions similar to a bolt in that it's an incredibly strong, strong uh, sort of mechanism uh, and clench nail, clenched nails are great as well but uh, they don't have quite the insane strength in, uh, as, a, as a rivet basically if you need to re-rivet something's going wrong <laughs> it's either that or it's an ancient boat Yeah, really looking forward to uh, seeing this vessel out on the water. It's going to just be a, an incredible craft for uh, for sailing around uh, 
Ipswich Bay and exploring uh, a lot of our local rivers. This uh, I sailed the Alfadori Spear that I built back in uh, 2009, I guess, 2008. Um, I sold, sailed her from, uh, from the Parker River at Newbury down uh, Plum Island Sound, behind Plum Island, out the Ipswich River. And then uh, past the Essex River out in the ocean, uh, off of uh, cranes and steep hill beaches. And then uh, across the front of uh, Wingosheek Beach there, and uh, turned up into the Anasquam, and arrived up in uh, Gloucester at the, uh, the uh, state ramp there. Uh, behind the behind the high school uh, by around uh, I think it was four thirty five in the afternoon and we probably set out at eight from Newbury so yeah like we were flying. And uh, yeah, this so this boat does excellent, you know, like up the Anasquam. There's some incredible sort of marsh sailing up there too. And then of course, if you get over to Essex, there's just a labyrinth of little islands and all kinds of water behind the beach there, behind the, the barrier island that is Cranes Beach. And just really beautiful scenery, as long as you aren't getting inundated by green heads. All right. Oh, yeah, that. Burner feels good. Uh, see how the uh, yeah, I'll put this fucking iron away. See just how hot the it's sucking in a little bit of heat. It's uh, up to uh, you know room temperature at least. Um, yeah. Up. Uh, uh, feels a lot better than the screaming cold chunk of steel that it was when I came out here. It looks like my uh, tea is steaming as well. Oh yeah, piping hot. On to the other side. I'll probably uh, restart the video once I get the other side marked off. Alright, so I actually just found a couple more little uh, kind of chinks in the armor of, uh, or not armor, but uh, uh, cracks in the between the doors and whatnot, that we're maybe letting a bit of heat out. And not that I'm going to be able to keep it totally weatherproof in here, but I'm you know, seeing what I can do about it. Try and keep in as much heat. Oh, yeah, probably the biggest one I found was, uh, was the uh, window upstairs was still uh, propped open a bit from the summer. So that's. 
kind of a big deal. Um, yeah. But uh, that and I just uh, put a panel over the um, the uh, the uh, ladder there up into the loft. So hopefully that'll sort of direct any warmth that rises from the uh, stove out this way a little bit. Oh yeah, it is uh, getting pretty. Uh, Pretty chilly outside, well into the 20s. I wouldn't be surprised if it was in the teens at this point, but yeah, the temperature is dropping. The sun's about to set as well, so that's probably a big part of it. like the chuck key just came off the, this little rope. I definitely don't want that to happen. Um, good luck getting another one that fits the drill. So I've got the little oil burner on high. I just heard it take a glug from the uh, reservoir to the wick. But I uh, won't be out here a whole lot longer this evening anyway, so. some riveting done before I go retreat inside my tail between my legs. This plank is just laying so close to the one below it that I'm not worried about the plank moving either way. Um, if there's a gap between the planks and you drill through one and then drill through the other, when you pull those planks together, the two holes can move slightly side to side. They can offset uh, depending on you know where you are on the plank and how the how far away the plank is from the other, but these are so close together that uh, I'm not really worried about movement as I rivet, because as you rivet those two planks together, they'll slide a tiny bit front to back. Uh, um, but yeah, not a big deal. Okay, so I've got a... Uh, box absolutely chock full of rivets here and um, we've got the hammer right here the uh, ball peen hammer and I'll go grab the bucking iron off the stove some warm okay 
Okay, now the only other things we'll need to have a successful round of riveting is the burrs. And, on. let me see if I can find it. Nippers. All right, we're ready to rub it finally. A long last. Looks like I could angle up a bit more with the drill, but uh, this will be good for the moment anyway. First rivet and the last strikes of the alpha door. <laughs> it's the uh, small victories that we got to celebrate on uh, chilly days like this. At least I'm out here, right? <laughs> Inside, right in front of the heater, watching Netflix or whatever, or my favorite YouTube channels. Yeah, I'm uh, meaning to do a uh, my f a reaction video, which. Uh, you know, if you watch YouTube at all, you may be familiar with the genre, but uh, I'm looking to do a reaction video to um, uh, to Acorn to Arabella's visit with Harold Burnham. So we'll see how that, see when I can get that out. It might even be one of these uh, shorts, so in that case it would be 60 seconds. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to say everything in 60 seconds, but, uh, yeah, they had an interesting, um, Steve had an interesting interaction with, uh, with Harold vis-a-vis, -vis, um, roller furling head sails. Atkins Ingrid that he's uh, building, which if you're unfamiliar with that uh, design, it's uh, basically a, a three-quarter scale um, Colin Archer uh, rescue boat, for all intents and purposes. Oops. Yeah, three-quarter scale uh, Colin Archer type uh, 
uh, catch and then yeah, he and uh, yeah, it was just an interesting sort of give and take. He's the rig he's chosen is not the original Ingrid. Ingrid rig, it's a uh, I forget what the name of it is. It's an alternate rig. It's Stormy something, I think, and it's a uh, it's a gaff rig as opposed to the original Ingrid rig, which was a uh, Marconi type, you know, Bermuda, whatever. Um, yeah, Marconi. Um, but. Uh, but it's actually, so it's not the original Ingrid rig, but it's actually, you know, much closer to the rig that the uh, original Colin Archer boats carried, which was, you know, a gaff rig, just, you know, just like what he's decided to go with, so, yeah. For those who hadn't been, who hadn't caught every video, the, uh, you know, one of the reasons that, uh, that had caught my interest among many was uh, the uh, stem on this boat here is actually a Grandy Oak from out at the, uh, the uh, Acorn to Arabella project. So, and, I've kind of seen a bit of what's going on out there. I've been following it anyhow. And uh, yeah, actually ended up uh, shooting the, uh, the A to A boys. Um, this is when, uh, yeah, shooting them an email. Uh, way back when, when they were just starting out the, the channel or project or whatever about this uh, interesting little Atkins designed uh, cutter rigged double under that was for sale over in uh, over on Cape Cod that I came across on. Uh, on uh, Craigslist uh, called Victoria, and uh, yeah, they ended up heading out there and uh, purchasing the boat. And getting to, getting to use a fair amount of it in their new build. Thanks so much for stopping by building the Alpha Dory. A massive thank you to everyone who's liked, subscribed, and supported the channel. Yeah, just, uh, you know, thank you very much and uh, much appreciated. Uh, your support makes, the, uh, makes these videos possible, so... Yeah, with that, uh, you know, Happy New Year to everybody, and uh, yeah, just a, a great day here around uh, around the house, and uh, yeah, see ya, bye. Happy New Year's from our family to yours.